What's up, everybody? It's Daniel back with another episode of Southern Sorcery. Today on The Breakdown, we are looking at Kai Car Wins Fury. He is a 3-3 bird wizard and says, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, create a 1-1 white spirit token with flying. And then you can sacrifice a spirit and add red to your mana pool. Yeah, so there's a few different ways to build Kai Car because you make those tokens anytime you cast a non-creature spell but the way we're going to build him today is as a control deck so lots of instants and sorceries removal counter spells things of that nature and then we're going to amass a giant spirit army and then we're going to find ways to buff those one one spirits to get through for lethal damage to win all right since this was our first time making our own pre-con if you will we decided to do an upfront little breakdown of the deck you know what the commander wants to do but here is a quick breakdown of the rest of what our deck does first up we have our ramp and reduction we have got 14 total ramp and cost reduction spells so that's everything from mana rocks to things that make treasures to things that reduce the cost of colored spells or certain types of spells next we have card draw or card advantage and in this category we have 19 cards card draw is extremely important in any deck um, but in this deck, because we have so many instants and sorceries and removals, we really need to find ways to keep our hands full. That way we can keep casting these one and two cost spells. Speaking of, we next have our removal and or board wipes for a grand total of 22 cards that are either spot removal, counter spells, or board wipes. Again, this is a control deck. This is the way we control the board state. Next up, we have token generators. Um, so that includes our commander, and then we have a few other creatures and enchantments that will also make token makers. We have a grand total of five that generate creature tokens. And then lastly, we want to be able to buff and use those creature tokens to swing out for damage to win. And so we have a total of six anthems that buff our tokens or all of our creatures. Before we move on, let me just say, if you like this kind of content and you want to support us, the best thing you can do is, of course, watch our content. But outside of that, please like and subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything. The buttons are right there. You're already watching the video. Why not? That helps us out a ton. It helps us out in the algorithm. And if you have thoughts on this video, please drop those in the comments section. That helps us out as well. It helps us building decks moving forward to know what kind of decks you guys enjoy and what you like. Could be something that we missed that desperately belongs in this deck or something that's not as great as we thought it was and it needs to come out. So we would love to hear your feedback. So let's go ahead and take a look at the cards in this deck. First up, we only have a couple of creatures because again, Kaikar wants to make creatures and he only makes those creatures when you cast non-creature spells. So we only have five creatures in this deck. The first one is Baral, Chief of Compliance. He is a human wizard, costs one and a blue for a one three wizard and says instants and sorcery spells you cast cost one less so we just want a little bit of reduction in our cost for our instants and sorceries that we're casting and then also whenever a spell or ability you control counters a spell you can draw a card so now all of your counter spells also draw you cards so card advantage there we also have mentor of the meek for two and a white it is a two two human soldier and says when another creature with power two or less so all of those spirits we're creating enters the battlefield under your control you can pay one generic mana and draw a card so again more card draw Next, we have Murmuring Mystic. It is three and a blue for a 1-5 human wizard that says when you cast an instant or a sorcery spell, create a 1-1 one, one blue bird illusion creature token with flying. So another way to populate more creatures onto our board. We also have Talran Sky Summoner. It is two and two blue for a 2-2 two, two merfolk wizard that says when you cast an instant or sorcery spell, create a 2-2 two, two drake creature token with flying. So again, more back up to what our commander already wants to do, which is make tokens with flying to populate our board. That way, if someone does remove Kaikar, we have a handful of backups that essentially do the same or very similar 
to what he does. Next up for sorceries, we can get started here with Austere Command, arguably one of the best board wipes in the game. This is just a way to control the board if things are getting out of hand. You have the ability to rebuild quickly with your commander, so this is a good way to keep control of the board and not let things get out of your control. Next up we have Chain Lightning. It is one red and it deals three damage to any target. Then that player or permanent controller may pay two red and if they do they may copy that spell and choose a new target for that copy. So can be a little bit dangerous but essentially it's just there to remove some small creature that's giving someone an advantage. It only costs one red. You would probably want to target someone who doesn't have access to red that way they can't turn around and sling it back at you. Next we have Expel the Interlopers. This is a new card from Wilds of Eldraine. It is three white white and it says choose a number between 0 and 10 destroy all creatures with power greater than or equal to the chosen number so again we have low to the ground ones and twos so we could pick three and then destroy everything else that's on the board if someone's playing big you know dragons or eldrazi's or things of that nature just another way for us to keep things in our favor next we have lucky offering it is one white and it says destroy target artifact with mana value three or less you gain three life again we are wanting to control the board this will take care of someone's ramp advantage in the early game um, you can destroy their mana rocks things of that nature um, there's lots and lots of artifacts out there that are three or less you've got boots you've got greaves you've got all those kinds of things that give shroud and hex proof to other people's board pieces this is a way to remove that as well next we have wild guess which is two red and it says as an additional cost to cast wild guess discard a card and then you draw two cards so if you've got something that's early game dead in your hand uh too big and then you want to draw some extra cards you can just discard whatever or if you're land flooded whatever the case might be all right next we have instance this is the bulk of this deck uh we have 28 instants in this deck and they do a little bit of everything we have counter spells we have removal we have card draw we have card advantage we have lots and lots and lots of stuff to do Mind you, each one of these will create at least one other creature when you cast them as long as you have your commander out. And then potentially more if you have one of those other creatures out. So let's get started. First we have Arcane Denial. It is one in a blue. It says counter target spell. Its controller can draw two cards on the next upkeep and you get to draw a card on the next upkeep. So it counters a spell and draws you a card. Next we have Blue Elemental Blast. It is one blue. It says can choose one counter a target red spell or destroy target red permanent now this gives you something to do no matter what because you could potentially counter one of your own spells if you really needed to in a pinch for to populate your board there with with a one one but chances are you're probably playing against someone in red and one blue to destroy a target red permanent is really good Next we have Break the Spell. It is one white and it says destroy target enchantment. If a permanent you controlled or a token was destroyed this way, draw a card. There are lots of token decks out there. Chances are you could probably use this to destroy a token pretty easily. And then you have also drawn a card in addition to helping to control the board and making a 1-1 one, one spirit. Next we have the classic counter spell. Two blue to counter a target spell. Next we have Deliberate, it is one in a blue, to scry two then draw one card. Next up we have Disenchant, which is one and a white, and it says destroy target artifact or enchantment. Next we have Essence Scatter, it is one in a blue to counter a target creature spell, so it is limited to creatures, however still very good. Next we have Factor Fiction, this is three in a blue. Fact or Fiction is a very fun card. It says reveal the top five cards of your library. Then you have an opponent put those cards into two piles. Put one pile into your hand and the other pile into the graveyard. Typically you're going to get at least two cards off of this. It, you know, it's up to your opponent, but still very good rate for Fact or Fiction. Next we have Frantic Search. It is two in a blue. It says draw two cards, then discard two cards, then untap up to three lands. So this card pays for itself. So it ends up being free, provided that you have the mana to cast it in the first place. And then you are going to get some card selection. Next we have Generous Gift. It is two in a white and it says destroy target permanent. That is any permanent. So that's really nice. And then its controller creates a 3-3 three, three green elephant token. And next we have Impulse, one and a blue, and it says look at the top four cards of your library. 
put one of them into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. So it moves you through your deck a little bit. You get to draw the best out of whatever you need from those four cards in that moment. Next we have Jwari Disruption. This is also a land card. It is the uh, MDFC. And on the one side, it is one in a blue to counter a target spell unless this controller pays one. But then if you need it to be a land, you can flip it and play it as a land instead. Next, we have Lightning Bolt. It is one red and it deals three damage to any target. Next, we have Negate, one in a blue to counter target non-creature spell. So kind of the opposite of essence scatter next we have obsessive search it is one blue to draw a card and then uh, it has a madness ability and you can pay a blue if you needed to discard this card to get down to hand size then you could just immediately cast it for its madness cost instead of actually discarding it. Next we have Opt, it is one blue. You scry one and then draw a card. So a little card advantage and card selection. Next we have Path to Exile. It is one white to remove a target creature from the game. Its controller may search his or her library for a basic land, put that card into play tapped and then shuffle. So a great way to get rid of something that has indestructible because this exiles. Next we have Pressure Point, it is one and a white for a instant that says tap a target creature, draw a card. So in your attack phase, you're moving to swing at somebody, you can tap down one of their creatures so they can't block with it and draw a card. Next, we have Quick Study, two in a blue for draw two cards from Wilds of Eldraine. Next, we have Reality Shift. It is one in a blue and it says exile target creature. Its controller manifests the top card of their library and manifest means that player puts the top card of their library onto the battlefield face down as a 2-2 creature. If it is a creature card, it can be flipped back over any time for its actual mana cost. But if it's not a creature spell, it just stays a 2-2 creature. Next we have Revitalize. It is one in a white and it says you gain three life, draw a card. So another card draw and a little bit of life gain. Next we have Shelter, one in a white. It says target creature you control gains protection from the color of your choice until the end of turn, draw a card. So it could potentially save something that you are wanting to hold on to. Um, from dying and then you get to draw a card next we have snap one in a blue it says return target creature to its owner's hand untap up to two lands so again this will pay for itself once you've cast it you return the target creature to someone's hand then you untap those two lands again so pretty good Next, we have Spell Pierce for one blue. It says counter target non-creature spell unless that controller pays two. Next, we've got Spell Stutter, one in a blue. It says counter target spell unless controller pays two plus an additional one for each fairy you control. We probably aren't going to have any fairies unless someone gives us one somehow. Next up, Swift Response. It's one in a white. It says destroy target tapped creature. Then we have Swords to Plowshares. It is one white. It says exile target creature. Its controller gains life equal to its power. So just be mindful of that. If you destroy someone's 12-12, then, you know, they're going to gain a whole bunch of life. Finally, we have Timely Interference. It is one blue, and it has a kicker. You can pay one and a red as you cast it. It says target creature gets minus one, minus zero until end of turn. If this spell was kicked, that creature blocks this turn if able and draw a card, which is really the part we care about. Okay, we're moving on from our instance now to our artifacts. We've got a handful of artifacts here. We've got 12. Again, they are non-creature spells, so each one of these will also net you a 1-1 spirit, provided you have the commander out. First up, we have Arcane Signet. It's a two drop, taps for one of any color. Next, we have Biden of Thassa. It's two blue blue, and it says whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. As we are making several of these 1-1 flyers, there's almost always someone who doesn't have flyers. We should be able to get through three or four creatures and potentially draw three or four cards. Biden of Thassa is great in this deck. Next, we have Commander Sphere. It is three. It taps for any color of mana that is in our commander's color identity. So that's really good for us in this. And then you can sacrifice it to draw a card if you need to. Next, we have Felwar Stone. It adds mana of any color that a land an opponent controls could produce. So typically something that we need. Next, we have Mind Stone. It is two and it taps for a colorless. And then you can pay one, sacrifice it to draw a card. Next, we have Mind Splice Apparatus. It is three and a blue and has flash. And it says at the beginning of your upkeep, put an oil counter on Mind Splice Apparatus. 
Then it says instant and sorcery spells you cast cost one less to cast for each oil counter on Mind Splice apparatus. So this is a good way to get a reduction there for our instants and sorceries down to single pips. Next we have Soul Ring, taps for two, cost one, best card in the game. Next we have Spear of Heliod. It is one white white and it says creatures you control get plus one plus one. So that's going to buff our whole army. And then you can pay one and two white and tap it to destroy a target creature that dealt damage to you this turn. So a little bit of a deterrent for people to not swing at you potentially. Next up we have the three talismans that fall into our color category. They each tap for a colorless and then they can tap for a color and it deals one damage to you. So that's talisman of conviction, talisman of creativity, and talisman of progress. Finally in our artifacts to round it out we have Thought Vessel, it is two taps for a colorless and gives you no maximum hand size. We went kind of heavier into the Mana Rocks than we maybe normally would in any other deck, but because they're artifacts and they will net you a 1-1 one, one spirit as well, each of those gets even more of an upside than it normally would. Now we'll move on to our enchantments, and just like everything else, it's a non-creature spell, so they make you creatures. So first we have Court of Grace. When it enters the battlefield, you become the Monarch. So you're introducing a little bit more card advantage into the game, potentially for you. And it says, at the beginning of your upkeep, create a 1-1 spirit creature token with flying. So the same creature that Kaikar makes, you'll make an extra one on your upkeep. However, if you've managed to maintain the Monarch from your last turn to your next turn up on your upkeep, you make a 4-4 white angel creature token with flying instead. So if you end up keeping the Monarch, and you potentially could, you could chump block as long as we have enough 1-1s one and things if people are swinging at you to try to get the Monarch. And then we have 4-4s, four and those add up quickly with the flying and are able to do a lot of damage. Next up in enchantments, we have Curiosity, which is one blue, and it enchants a creature. It is an aura. And it says whenever enchanted creature deals damage to an opponent, you may draw a card. So you can enchant your own creature and, or you could enchant someone else's creature. Next we have Dark Steel Mutation. It is one and a white for another enchantment aura and it says enchant creature. The enchanted creature is an insect artifact creature with base power and toughness of 0-1, has indestructible, and loses all other abilities, card types, and creature types. So whoever's got a nice value engine out, Welcome to being a 0-1 indestructible bug. A great card. Next up we have Divine Sacrament. It is 1 and 2 white, and it says white creatures get plus 1, plus 1, so that's going to apply to all the spirits we're making. And then it has Threshold, and it says white creatures get an additional plus 1, plus 1, as long as there are 7 more cards in your graveyard. Yeah, so nothing but upside there. Next we have Fiery Inscription. This is from the Lord of the Rings, and it says when it enters the battlefield, the ring tempts you. And then the ring tempts you, and it says your ring bearer is legendary. It can't be blocked by creatures with greater power. So you could potentially give that to whatever creature that you have on board, and then it can't be blocked by anything bigger. So that's good. And then it says whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, fiery inscription deals two damage to each opponent. So that's the part we're really after. The ring tempting you is just a little added bonus. Next we have Glorious Anthem, which is one and two white, and it says creatures you control get plus one plus one. So again, just buffing our one ones, trying to get them a little bit bigger because they have flying. Then we have Glory of Warfare. It is two red and a white, and it says as long as it's your turn creatures you control get plus two plus zero and as long as it's not your turn creatures you control get plus zero plus two so when it's your turn it buffs their power when it is not your turn it buffs their toughness so making them more viable blockers next we have guild artisan it is one in a red and it's a legendary enchantment background which makes no difference to us because whatever we can't pick a background with this commander and it says commander creatures you own have Whenever this creature attacks a player, if no opponent has more life than that player, you create two treasure tokens. So that turns Kaikar into a mana generator as well, which is fantastic. Treasures are great. Next we have Impact Tremors, one in a red. It says whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, Impact Tremors deals one damage to each opponent. 
So now every time we make a token, we are pinging each of our opponents for one damage. We also have intangible virtue. This is one in a white for an enchantment and it says creature tokens you control get plus one plus one and have vigilance. Vigilance is huge for this because now we can swing out every turn and still have blockers. This is a great card in this. Next we have kindred discovery. It is three blue blue, one of the more expensive cards in this deck. However, it says when it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. When a creature you control of the chosen type enters the battlefield or attacks, draw a card. So now every time we make a token or attack with a token, we get to draw a card. So huge card advantage for us. Next we have Mana Flare. It is two in a red and it says whenever a player taps a land for mana, that player adds one mana of any type that land produced. This affects the whole table, so it is giving some advantage to the rest of the board, which is why this card is super cheap. However, it's gonna be beneficial for us as well. Next, we have Monologue Tax. It is two and a white for an enchantment that says when an opponent casts their second spell each turn, create a treasure token. So we're gonna make more tokens. Next, Raid Bombardment is two and a red, and it says whenever a creature you control with power two or less attacks, which is going to be most of our tokens raid bombardment deals one damage to that player or planeswalker that creature is attacking so just another way to ping our opponents finally rounding out enchantments we have roar of resistance which is one in a red and it says creature tokens you control have haste whenever one or more creatures attack you can pay one in a red if you do creatures attacking your opponents and or planeswalkers they control get plus two plus zero until the end of turn so it is something you can pay into and buff your board enough to potentially finish off an opponent or win the game. And finally, we have our lands for this deck. There are only a handful of lands, um, 33 lands and 34. Four, if you include the MDFC that we talked about earlier, Jwari Disruption. First, we have Castle Ardenvale. It comes in tapped unless you control planes. It taps for white, and then in a pinch, you can pay four into it, tap it, and create a 1-1 one, one human. So if potentially after a board wipe, you uh, need to try to repopulate as quickly as you can, something to block. Just kind of there, there for you as a little bit of utility. Next, we have Command Tower. Taps for any color in your commander's color identity. Then we have Exotic Orchard. Taps for any color of a land that an opponent controls could produce. Then we have Path of Ancestry. It enters the battlefield tapped and taps for any color of mana in your color identity. Then we have Reliquary Tower. Taps for a colorless and gives you no maximum hand size. Rogue's Passage. Taps for colorless, but you can pay four into it and target creature becomes unblockable. And then lastly, Terramorphic Expanse. Let you go get a land of whatever color you need to fix your mana. The rest are basics that round out. We've got 10 islands, eight mountains, and eight plains. Our breakdown of our spells are 41% are blue, 33% are white, and 17% are red. Thank you guys so much for spending some time with us today. This has been a blast. It's been something a little bit new for us. Kaikar is a super fun commander to play. Control can be a little bit of something you maybe want to talk about for your rule zero. Because you want to control the board, sometimes people don't enjoy playing against that, so just make sure that your play group, if it's super casual, know that's what this deck does. If it's a little bit more competitive, this is going to fit right in, especially for 35 bucks. This is extremely powerful, and really a place where it would shine would be in Two-Headed Giant, where you would have a control deck, your partner would have an aggro deck. You can control what your opponents are doing while your partner builds up his board and is able to swing through and do lots of damage. So that's a really fun way to play this. If you haven't checked us out, please check out our Patreon. We just overhauled that. We've got some new tiers and some new perks coming up. We do lots of box breaks and give fantastic deals to our patrons and we thank them so much for their continued support but coming up we've got uh i know we've got some really cool um collector boxes so we've got a whole bunch of those we're doing those at 20 dollars a pack and so especially for something like lord of the rings that is a steal for the ravnica remastered that's a really good deal 20 bucks a pack for collector packs is a really good deal so be sure to head on over to our patreon uh the link will be down below you can also find us at all the other usual suspects at social medias instagram twitter tiktok those kinds of things check us out there follow us we've got discord as well um you can jump in the discord 
Discord and keep up with all of our stuff and maybe grab some spell table games and things like that. Again, thank you guys so much for spending some time with us today. We hope you loved this deck. If you have thoughts, things that you think shouldn't be in there or things that you think should be in there, drop those down in the comments. Like and subscribe. It is totally free for you guys to do and it helps us out so, so much. Thank you again for your time and we'll talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.